now, Decoder Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Hidden Door. Come on, Jake, get the door open. We ain't gone all night. I'm trying. This lock isn't like anything I've ever seen before. So what I tell you? I knew there was something fishy about this office. It don't do us any good if we can't get past the lock, Cliff. I said I was working on it. We heard you just fine, Jake. And you want to hope the night watchman didn't. Sorry, uh, Cliff, I I didn't mean to blow my top. The lock, dummy! Hey, take it easy on the kid, Lenny. He ain't exactly used to the life of crime. Are you, kid? I need to concentrate. Used to be a locksmith. Till the landlord closed down his shop. Ain't that right? You know it is. He's gonna be real useful to us, Lenny. You'll see. For finesse jobs like this. Finesse? Not another way of saying waste of time? You wait and see, Lenny. I got friendly with a skirt that works in the building. She says there's this office that's locked up tighter than a drum. Not a soul coming or going. Ever. So? So, who opens up an office in a big, expensive building like this, pays for all the best security, and lets it sit empty? I don't know. Somebody with more money than brains, I guess. Sounds good to me. I think I got it! Bingo! Good work, kid. Here. What? I don't want to carry a gun. Could be trouble in there. I'm not going in. I'm just here to open the door. You'll do what I'll say you'll do. Now take the gat before I get the rough. Smart boy. Now, you first. But... Come on. I can't see anything. Use your flashlight, dummy. No, it's not that. I, I mean, the place is empty. What? Ah, uh, swell. It can't be. It, it don't make no sense. Swell caper, Cliff. Let's get out of here while the getting's good. No. Spread out the both of yous. Check the drawers, the closets, anywhere you can find. There's got to be something in here that's worth hiding. And whatever it is, I wants it. <laughs> hey. Hey, Cliff. Come here. What you got? This, uh, this wall panel. It's, it's got a latch. I think the whole thing opens. <clears throat> yeah, see, now we just slide it back like this. See? It's a ladder. A ladder? Yeah. A steel ladder built into the walls. I think it runs up to the roof. This place just keeps getting spookier. I'm getting out of here. You're getting nothing. Hey, fellas, over here. Sounds like the kids found something. Cliff! Lenny! Look! Keep your voice down, you jit. You ain't gonna do your dear old ma any good if you bring the law down on our heads, are you? Sorry, I just... What do you got? Well, I... I found this. What in the world? Is this some kind of joke? What? It looks like the end of some kind of... giant glass tube. N nah, that, that ain't glass. Well, whatever it is, it's empty. What's supposed to be in this thing? I don't know that anything's supposed to be in it. It looks like one of those pneumatic tubes they use for messages, but bigger. Don't be stupid. It's as big as a man in there. I'm just saying that's what it looks like, is all. And I'm saying get in there and find out. Me? Better do what he says, kid. Well, but how do I even... Hey, there's a latch here. It opened up. Well, take a look inside, dummy. Stop calling me that. I'll call you that and worse. Now get in there and see where the goodies is. I can't see anything. It's completely smooth. It's empty. Hey! Hey! The tube slid shut automatically! Cliff! Lenny! Help me out of here! Hey! What's that? I can't hear you through the tube. Quit shining your light in my eyes! I can't hear anything. Uh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta... What? There's a switch in here. Can you hear me? I said there's a switch in here. I think it opens the door. I'm gonna try it now. Nope. It didn't do anything. <laughs> he vanished. 
Cliff, you see? He, he vanished. He didn't vanish. He got pulled down the tube. But to where? Come on, Cliff. We gotta get out of here before it's for the law. But where'd that tube take him, Lenny? Where did he go? If the two criminals left standing in the office could only see the journey of their confederate, they would be amazed indeed. Down, down, the one called Jake is pulled, down to the bottom of the building, riding a carefully controlled tide of compressed air that propels him along the tube at tremendous speed. Underneath the city streets, he races through the blackness towards his unknown destination. Finally, the reverse pressure begins to slow his approach. In a moment, the great pneumatic tube will open to reveal a secret underground lair far below a fashionable district of the city where even now two familiar figures may be found. Listen. I'm not saying that the case isn't important. I'm just saying my alter ego should be seen in public once in a while, even if it does mean putting on a tuxedo. Swell. I would have thought you'd be happy for a night out. Ooh, an evening sitting in one of the most fashionable parking lots in town. You really are too good to me. I could take a taxi cab. I didn't mean that. I'm the driver, I'll drive. Kit, we've been working nonstop for weeks. I just thought that you could use the evening off. Really? Well, I... You must be sick and tired of the sight of me by now. You would think that. See? I didn't mean... You have a way of putting words in a girl's mouth, you know that? Did you hear something? What's to hear? Ah! Oh, it feels good to get that mask off. Almost sounded like the tube. Actually, it would be nice to wash my hair. That is, if you really don't mind. Hmm? Uh, no, of course not. Oh, a bath sounds awful nice. A ba- <clears throat> A whole evening off just to sit and soak in the tub. Yes, well... <laughs> you all right, boss? Of course. Never better. It's just that your face is the same color as your mask. Listen. Oh, no. No changing the subject. I mean it. So do I. Oh, my gosh. But... How? The Red Panda? I told you I heard that tube. The Red Panda and Kit Baxter? Jake Byron? Kit? Uh Uh-oh. Don't get comfortable. You're not staying. But he said... Don't tell me what he said. He said to watch you till he got back. He said nothing about letting you sit down. Now on your feet. Whatever you say. That's better. I don't know why you put the mask back on. It comes with a job. But I've seen your face. Then you don't need to see it again. Kit, for Pete's sake, I've known you since you were two. You don't know me, and I don't know you. I used to know a boy named Jake Byron. He was a good kid. He got an honest job, and he looked after his family. I don't know who you are. What about you? We're not talking about me. We're talking about you. There was only one way you could come out of that tube, and that's if you broke into the office it's hidden in. It's not what you think. Honest. Oh, I suppose you just broke a window on the 16th floor and went in after your baseball, that it? What about this gun we took off you? I didn't try and stop you. As if you could. Nice little thirty-eight. Not the sort of thing my friends carry in their pockets. No, they carry gas bombs and grapple guns. I can't believe you'd do something like this. Me? What am I doing exactly? Risking your life, flying over rooftops, fighting supervillains. So I should have gotten into a nice safe line like burglary, that it? I suppose he put you up to it. He who? Come on, Kit. Don't. If you're the flying squirrel, then the red panda can only be one man. I said don't. He can afford to risk his life. He's got more money than God and no family to look out for. What if something happened to you? What about your ma? (laughs) Don't you talk to me about the boss. You know nothing about him. And don't you dare lecture me about my mother. Don't you even speak her name. Your mother would die of shame if she saw you now. Criminal. I I was doing this for her. I'm sure she'd be thrilled. Get up. They took everything, Kit. I couldn't pay my rent on the shop. The landlord closed me down. Most of my equipment was still inside. How am I supposed to earn a living? I said, get up. How was I supposed to take care of my mother? My sister? You think they'd have wanted this? It was only supposed to be this one time. 
This one door. And the gun. Was that supposed to be just this one time, too? I didn't think... That's right, you didn't. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake, Kit. What was I supposed to do? The right thing. And if it was easy to do, everybody'd do it, and there'd be no need for this mask. It's not the red panda that makes me risk my life, Jacob Byron. It's you. Sounds like the boss is back. Lucky boy. Boss! What happened here? He, uh, fell. A couple of times, by the look of it. I'd stay down if I were you, son. Any sign? His confederates were long gone by the time I reached the end of the tube. You sure there were others? At least one, by the look of things. There were two. You shut up now. Nobody's talking to you. Who is he? A boy from the neighborhood. I haven't seen him much for a few years. Had a locksmith shop last I heard. It's gone now. So he's not a career criminal. I'm right here. I won't tell you again. This is bad. Can't you just, you know... Hypnotize him? Certainly. But his confederates are loose on the street. And while they may not know that the tube is actually our secret gate into the heart of downtown, they certainly know that it's something important. We must stop them before that knowledge spreads. Shall we blow up the tube? Then they can't follow it back to the lair. We'll keep that option in our back pockets. It's far too useful to give up on this easily. Besides, even if the tube were disabled, the ownership of that office building is a matter of public record. It wouldn't take them long to trace it back to me. Then we better get a move on. We need to know who we're dealing with. That should tell us if they're likely to panic or if they'll try to profit by this knowledge, which would buy us a little time. Can I just... Are you still here? Uh, Please, please. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for what I've done already, and I'm sorry it looks to get worse before it gets better. I've been a coward, but I want to try to do the right thing. Please? Can we trust him? I trust hypnosis a little more. If he's known you for this long, it's going to be a fairly invasive erasure. I'd rather not subject his mind to more trauma than I have to. What is he saying? He's saying we're going to trust you for a little while, Jacob. And God help you if you make me regret it. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Good night, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Good night already. You you all right getting home? You, You don't look so good. I don't look so good? Brother, you need a mirror and a pot of black coffee. Get some shut eye. Boy, what a grouch! <laughs> good night, good night, Larry. Good night, Larry. Lousy drunks. Leonard Marks. W- what's that? Who's there? Drowning your sorrows, Marks. That voice. <laughs> That laugh? No. (laughs) Closing time, Leonard Marks. Time to pay the piper. No. No, you won't take me. Gotta get out of here. Gotta get away. Awful sporting of you to run down this alley, Lenny. No, not not you. Nowhere to run, Marks. Keep your hands where we can see them. Yeah? Or what? Try us and see. No, no. No, I, I give. I surrender. Ah, shucks. Please, you, you gotta believe me. It wasn't me. It was Cliff's plan all the way. The break-in, it, it was Cliff. Cliff Parson? Yeah, that's him. You gotta believe me. You're lying, Marks. We know the job was planned by Jake Byron. What? That, that kid? No. No, you got it all wrong. Jake's just some poor kid Cliff roped into the job. He's not even a real crook. Hmm. It's Cliff. He's the one you want. Wrong again, Lenny. We want everybody. No, no, but please, I won't talk. I won't tell a soul. Tell a soul what? About the tube we found. It was Cliff that figured it all out. Cliff that said who else but the Red Panda would have a contraption like that. It's their back door. He's making all the arrangements. What arrangements? The auction. Cliff's put it out on the street that he knows a way to get to the Red Panda. Figures every hood worth his salt will want in on the takedown, and they'll pay plenty for it. Oh, brother. That could work to our advantage. If he's trying to sell information, he won't reveal what he knows to anyone. That's right. And why aren't you with him, Lenny? 
You know what he knows. Half of that fortune belongs to you. Uh Uh-uh. Not me. Not this time. I told him I didn't want no trouble with you masked do-gooders. Every man-jack I know that's gone up against you wound up in the pen or the hospital or or both. I'm out. I told him. And what did Cliff say? He said I'd come crawling back like every time. I'd come back for the auction or he'd put, put a bullet right between my eyes. And he will, too. That puts you between a rock and a hard place, Lenny. What you gonna do about it? I don't know. I don't know. I'd walk away if I could, but I'm too far in. Too many people own a piece of me. I guess I'm done. Would you really walk away if you could, Marx? Do you truly wish to live an honest life with a clean slate? You could start fresh, and you could forget everything about the last five minutes cowering in a pile of garbage begging for mercy. Anything. I'll do anything. Please. What are you up to? I have an idea. A willing subject is easier to work on, and we don't have a lot of time. If he really wishes to be free of his past... I mean it, Red Panda. I'll do anything you want. Then open your mind to mine, Leonard Marks. Your mind to mine. Yes. My thoughts are your thoughts. Yes. You have become an instrument of justice, Leonard Marks. Even if you won't remember it that way yet... And those who would seek to profit from our destruction will pay a heavy price indeed. To the Red Panda! Are you Cliff Parson? Who wants to know? (laughs) Is that any way to talk to a customer, Cliffy? Hey, nobody calls me that and I ain't got nothing to sell. Now, don't be that way. Word around the campfires, there's a lowlife named Cliff Parson in the back room of the Black Horse with some very, very tasty dish on a certain masked menace. Is that a fact? I'd be very interested to meet that lowlife. If I see him, I'll tell him. You're starting to twist my tail, Sonny. Well, ain't that a crying shame? This auction is invites only, and crazies ain't invited, see? Sure. Sure, I see. All part of society's sad prejudice against those who just happen to have been born a little different. A little homicidally insane. (laughs) Hey, I only deal with respectable crooks. People I know. People you know? Well, why didn't you say so cliffy old buddy old pal? How's your mum? I've never seen you before in my life. Well, allow me to sweep aside this trench coat and reveal my true form. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, the mad monkey... The Mad Monkey. The very same. What, that freak that pulls all the monkey crimes? Why, you little punk! Don't you know that I am the Red Panda's greatest nemesis? Nemesis? No, I didn't know that. Neither does he! (laughs) But he'll realize it at last when I ambush him in his own secret lair. (laughs) Hey, 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 hey! Slow down, you babbling baboon. Ooh, babbling baboon. I like that one. Look, there's a lot of big dough wants a ticket to that surprise party, monkey. A lot of class X. Why should I let you stink up the joint? Because of this! Oh, a briefcase. I'm terrified. Save your applause for the end, please. Feast your eyes on this. Whoa. Look at all that Mazuma. Just a little $5,000 get-to-know-me gift. Just for letting little old me through the door. Hey, Cliff. Cliff. Well, well. Look who came crawling back. Sure, sure, I came back. I was just rattled is all. We're bowling a little out of our league here. Uh Uh-oh, domestic trouble. Shall I go? You stay right there. And you, don't think you're coming back for an even cut. It's me what pulled in all these high rollers. They'll pay through the nose to get their hands on the red panda. And you'll take what I say you get. Sure, Cliff. Sure, but I got one more guy that wants in on the action, Cliff. A real high roller. You... Where would you find the high roller? Well, I... Do I look stupid? I wouldn't answer that if I were you. He's a little sensitive. I didn't mean nothing, Cliff. You say the guy ain't in, I I guess he ain't in. All right, Lenny, you're back in. But watch your step. Through that door, down in the basement. The basement, you say? (laughs) How charming. The basement? Here? Now? No time like the present. Most of the other interested parties are already down there, We'll start the bidding any minute. Delightful! (laughs) Now get down there. Sure thing, Cliff. Sure thing. All right, Mad Monkey, you too. See, Cliff, old chum, not to compromise the integrity of the process in any way, but if I could just have a word in your ear while we're alone. That's $50,000 for the location of the Red Panda's secret entrance. 
Do I hear 60,000? 60,000? 70. Golden Claw, you no you good. Listen to me. I've got a score to settle with that masked freak, and I'll kill the man that gets in my way. Yeah, well, the same goes double for me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, and I do use the term loosely. This should be a joyous occasion. These boys have stumbled across a secret we've all been dying to get our hands on. And not one of us wants to be left out of the kill, isn't that right? Yeah! Why should we? Why should any of us? I say we pool our resources. Share and share alike. <laughs> what are you, some kind of communist? Now, now, none of that. Why, I wouldn't dream of cutting into these boys' nest egg. I say every man here empties his pockets. Every penny each of us was prepared to pay to be in on the destruction of those costumed cretins. And we head over and do the deed right this very minute. Now, before he gets wise. He's defeated every crook and gangster in this town. But what hope would he have against all of us together? Yeah! And I'll get things rolling. Here's one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> now step up, all of you. Empty those pockets. Honor among thieves. How's this, young Mr. Parson? This pile of dough meet with your approval? Yeah, Mr. Monkey. That'll do just fine. Well, ball it up and let's go hunting. All right, step lively, gents. There's no use trying to sneak this group anywheres. The law will be here soon enough, but not soon enough to save the man in the mask. Well, Parsons, you've got your dough. Where's the secret door, then? It's right through here, in this closet. If this is a joke, it isn't funny. Wait, Cliff, you got it all wrong. The tube's over here, behind this wall. What are you talking about? This wall's rock solid. What is this? Some kind of double cross? No, no, I swear. This is the place. The door was right over here. Hey, lay off, fellas. This is on the level. What's that? Through the windows. It's a spotlight. It's a double cross. Parson, I'll kill you. And then we'll kill a few cops on the way down. <laughs> All right, monkey. What's so darn funny? Oh, you'll never get it. You wouldn't appreciate the subtle humor. Yeah? Try me. Well, you see... I am not the mad monkey. <gasps> <gasps> it's him. It's the red panda. And this is a gas grenade. <laughs> Twenty-six gangsters, thugs, and racketeers with sixty-eight outstanding warrants between them. Not a bad night's work. And almost half a million dollars they paid out to get their paws on us. Boss, we can head every charity in town. That was a swell idea of yours, disguising yourself as the mad monkey. Well, with Lenny hypnotized back in the alley, it was just a matter of getting Cliff to drop his guard for a moment. A few words in his ear before the auction, and both of them remembered everything just as it was, but in the wrong building. The fewer memories you have to change, the easier it is. And since I convinced Chief O'Malley to put him into protective custody, it looks like Lenny Marks will get his fresh start after all. That's right, Kit. He'll be given a new identity and a clean slate. I hope he'll make the most of it. Speaking of which, what are you going to do about Jake Byron? Oh... That's a little more complicated. We don't want any memories flooding back uninvited. I could arrange for him to find honest work in another city, move his family there. I should probably erase most of his memories of you. That is, if you... Uh... Since you're too polite to ask, he tried to hold my hand in the fifth grade. I gave him a bloody nose. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. I'm sorry your night off was spoiled. You mean my B-A-T-H? <clears throat> Ooh, look. It even works if you spell it. Kit. Are you sure superheroes are allowed to blush like that? Kit Baxter, behave yourself. Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda. 
This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 23, The Hidden Door, was written and directed by Greg Taylor and featured the vocal talents of Stephen Burley, Scott Moyle, Tim Vant, M. John Kennedy, Christopher Mott, Monica Cote, Clarissa Dunander-Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>